My name's Joe Morgan. I'm a software developer for a small company in Cardiff called Delio. My name is Jay. Um, I'm a university student. I'm in my second year doing neuroscience. So we're attempting to tackle the problem re regarding mental health in young people, especially the stigma uh, surrounding mental health in young people. And we're essentially trying to take the, the burden of mental health and put it in the, in the hands of the people who aren't suffering, so the friends and the family members, to try and open those conversations. I think our main aim is to like initiate conversation, asking them how they really are, rather than just um, paraphrasing how they are. Um, the main reason why I'm really passionate about mental health is um, I, had dep uh, I had mild depression um, when I went into uni. I came from a very family-orientated background and I had an expectation, like most, most university students do, of how they want their uni life to be and mine was completely opposite to what I expected. Whenever someone asks me what, like, how did your depression occur, it's difficult for me to give them an answer because it's actually a collection of things, including loneliness, health, um, etc. And it's, in a way, it's a positive feedback loop. It only came recently when I realised that um, I, I actually accepted the fact that I had depression um, and the fact that my flatmates actually wanted to initiate a conversation with me, they forced me to come into a room and talk to them. It actually helped me so much and it made me realise I could have done that ages ago. I could have talked to them last year. Why did I talk to them this year? And it was all about that fear of what they might say, what they might talk about. But ever since then, I've just, something's changed. And I think I highly value the fact that import, um, conversations are really important. Yeah, it's similar with me. So there have been a three points in my life where I felt I've suffered with depression. And two of those points, the things that helped me through was just simply just to talk to a friend or a family member. So my depression I've had for around probably about seven or eight years. And there have been three key points in my story that have forced me to ask for help. And when, one of those times I had to ask professional help. But the other two times I just had to ask for help from a family member or a friend. And it's essentially what we're trying to get across is that the most important thing to do when you have a mental health problem is to talk but sometimes it's actually very hard to open that conversation yourself so if we can put if we can essentially give people the, the skills and the confidence to open those conversations with people who think we might be suffering then that'll be a really good thing for everyone it's more of the fact that okay if i ask joe how he is a lot of people just use how you are as a starting sentence and i think we're trying to gain the fact that why don't we make how you are a larger proportion of most conversations? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I can't stress the value of conversations. Uh, another point we sort of we'd like to make is essentially there are professional services in place for young people, especially, like especially when you're suffering mental health problems. But there's such a stretch on those services, and nine times out of ten I would say the people I've spoken to have just said we don't need to speak to a professional we just need to speak to someone because they don't know who to talk to they immediately go to the professional whereas if we actually gave people the skills and the confidence to open those conversations we could actually take a lot of the strain off the professional services. We actually conducted a survey um, specifically target, targeting um, Cardiff University students and other like students in other universities and one of the significant feedback that we got was a sentence which was we just want an ear and that just highlights in itself how important it is for people to talk about mental health and mm. yeah it's essentially they want people want to be listened to they don't necessarily want you to ask the right questions to say the right things it's just saying anything and just asking how they actually are it's just like jay said it's essentially just the, the one bit of information that really struck hard with us was the quote just to be an ear. The reason why I, love, I like, want to campaign for mental health is the fact that there's not only a stigma around mental health, but there's a stigma around men in particular. Mm -hmm. And I can't say for other people, but for me, it's sometimes that we men, for example, have a particular stereotype that we need to follow. And if we ever talk about mental health or if we ever talk about depression or anything about anxiety, it we have that fear that it might cause um, other people to think we're weak. Yeah. And I think we really want to tackle that barrier. Yeah, we yeah. Decrease it. It's just, yeah, it's essentially, it's a lot easier, I found in the past, to put on a brave face and to 
act like a man as opposed to actually open up to my friends about how I'm feeling because I don't want to feel demasculated at the end of the day. A lot of my friends actually know that I'm a very energetic, I'm a very sociable person, but it's a, str it's a struggle for me because they don't actually understand what, what happens when in the other days when I don't see them. I only see them for probably like six hours um, in a day. They don't know what happens in the rest of the, the other hours, like what, how I am in my room mm -hmm. or some of the like worst events that happened. It's just like it happens on your own and yeah. not many people see that. It's essentially, it's like Jay say, it's behind the closed doors. It's very easy to put on a brave face when you're in, in the pub or you're in lectures or you just sat downstairs with your friends. But it's when you go up to your room and you, you are genuinely depressed and you sit in your room. They're the, they're the things people don't see. And that's essentially part of the work we're doing at the moment is to try and tell those stories. So essentially, we're all aware that mental health is a big problem at the moment, but we're not really sure what it's like for people suffering, like actually what their story actually is. And a lot of the charities and campaigns that I've seen are telling people that mental health does exist. But what's annoying for me is they're not giving them the action, the skills in order to help improve their mental health. Like I, I can totally understand that something like mental health and depression is not going to go away instantly and it's something that will remain. But the fact that we need to, people need to know how to cope with mental health rather than just knowing, oh yeah, mental health exists. And the conversations surrounding mental health need to be so normalised that anyone's confident enough to speak up about it. Hi everyone, my name is Marion. My name is Marie. And we're here today to tell you about our social action campaign and share our stories with you. Yeah, so I wanted to begin with my story. Um, so my friend recently became a victim of a racist incident in a major retail store, which was not handled appropriately with the seriousness it deserved by management. So it was a traumatic experience for her, and this response was enough to discourage her from asking for support. So I was able to get in touch with Wales Online, who interviewed my friend and I, and published an article about the incident. This experience helped us both to know the importance of getting our voices heard and not stopping at any barriers. I realised that through discussing with other BME students, they suffered similar experiences and found the importance of supporting other young girls. I also wanted to join Uprising to learn how best to make change happen in our local communities and to encourage other young people to take on an active role in making that change. Since I was little, I've always been very passionate about playing sports. I played hockey to football and even surfing. But the one common issue I recognised was that I seemed to be the only or one of the only few ethnic girls participating. And to be honest, it made me feel quite isolated because I couldn't see anyone else there like me. And it's through my own personal experience that I wanted to join Uprising to use my voice to help those around me and in my community. We recognise that BME women and girls are underrepresented in our community and this is something we would like to see a change in. It's about breaking the cycle of lack of representation and creating a positive uh, communicative platform through our campaign. So what are the background and the statistics for our campaign? According to the Welsh Government, only 2.3% of individuals within the government are from a BME background. Also, did you know that the National Assembly for Wales have created an entire report recognising the lack of participation in sport for BME women in Wales? However, the problem is, externally, there are minimal resources in place to actively support this issue. Uzo Iwobi, who is the Chief Executive of Race Council Cymru, has stated that Despite their efforts to contribute to the discussion on curriculum reform through representation of ethnic role models, their offers to contribute are going unanswered. Th these issues are what our campaign are going to address and impact. The BBC News in 2019 have stated that ethnic minority graduates face a job gap. Specifically, Bangladeshi and Pakistani uh, graduates are 12% less likely to be employed than white British graduates. So, what is our campaign? Our campaign aims to encourage and empower BME women and girls to seize opportunities and encourage equal representation in positions of power, such as business and sport. And our aims are to see young girls and women in our community progressing and becoming leaders in non-traditional roles. We also aim to increase interconnectivity between businesses and schools to facilitate involvement and advance career paths. We also want to actively reach out to young girls in schools and educate them about the importance of seizing these opportunities, where they can find them and how they can secure them.
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>